Uh, Mr. Engdahl, uh, with this new development, the news of Gaddafi being killed, does this mean peace in Libya? I don't think at all it means peace. What we're seeing is, is the uh, gruesome next chapter in, in uh, what's going to be a, a mob rule in that country of different tribal groups competing for power and oil control. And this was predictable from the beginning when the Pentagon started training these, these activists and secretly arming the insurgents uh, back over a year ago even. So I think Libya is in for a, a period of, of horrendous chaos uh, after the NATO bombing that brought parts of Libya back to the Stone Age. So this is not at all an omen for justice and democracy by any means. All right, let's just talk about the uh, footage that's been uh, being shown all around the world now. The U UN Human Rights Council, they want to probe into the circumstances of Gaddafi's death. What do you think that will achieve? Well, uh, at least it puts the, uh, the pressure on this so-called tra transitional national council. Uh, I think this is a case of cold-blooded murder uh, of a man who was wounded uh, and certainly wasn't going to go anywhere. And uh, the way it was done was, it was just uh, gives an idea of, of what the moral values are of, of this new, new regime in Libya. And it's certainly not a step forward, it's a step backwards. Okay, following that line uh, of uh, thinking, though, will the UN demand, do you think, an investigation into the civilian deaths caused by uh, NATO bombing as well as the conflict inside? Well, I think uh, the UN should demand that if, they, if they're at all uh, concerned with, with uh, human values. They should demand that exactly because the civilian deaths that have taken place from the NATO bombing and not, uh, not so much from Gaddafi's activities or Gaddafi's troops, uh, that, uh, according to eyewitness accounts from journalist friends of mine, is, has just been horrific. Okay, now this uh, certainly has taken one path, uh, the, the result right now, Gaddafi being killed. Is this what NATO had been uh, gunning for to begin with, or would it have rather seen him in court? I don't think they wanted him in court, frankly, because uh, things would have come out about uh, uh, U.S. activities and, and uh, things would have come out uh, about uh, Libya that NATO wasn't particularly eager to have come under the spotlight. So for them, it's interesting how all these arch criminals who are uh, opposed to the Pentagon come come to court trial and then suddenly die, uh, uh, you know, before they get a chance to uh, have justice or whatever. But uh, I don't think they wanted Gaddafi to come to court. Okay. Well, more speculation has been raised on the reasons for NATO's intervention in Libya. And as RT's Laura Emmett reports, the organization may have been trying to prevent Gaddafi from burying the American buck. According to some, it's about protecting civilians. We must not tolerate this regime using military force against its own people. Others say it's about oil. The only reason they're interested in, with Libya is about the oil. You'd think we'd be in Iraq if the major export there was broccoli. But some are convinced intervention in Libya is all about currency, specifically Gaddafi's plan to introduce the gold dinar, a single African currency made from gold, a true sharing of the wealth. It's one of these things that you have to plan almost in secret, because as soon as you say you're going to change over from the dollar to the something else, you're going to be targeted. There were two conferences on this, one in 96 uh, and another one in the year 2000, called the World Mataba Conference, organized by Gaddafi. And uh, everybody was interested. I think most countries in Africa were keen. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold. The UK has double that, but 10 times the population. I do have one question. During the crisis or any time that you're aware of, uh, has the Federal Reserve or Treasury participated in any gold swaps arrangements? Uh, we don't, the Federal Reserve does not own any gold at all. We have not owned gold since 1934. Um, uh, we don't 
The Federal Reserve does not own any gold at all. We have not owned gold since 1934. The Federal Reserve does not own any gold at all. If Gaddafi uh, had an intent to try to uh, reprice his oil or whatever else the, uh, the country was uh, selling in the global markets and accept something else as a currency or maybe launch a gold in our currency, any move such as that would certainly not be welcomed by the power elite today who are responsible for controlling the world's central banks. So yes, that would certainly be something that would cause his immediate dismissal and the need for other reasons to, uh, to be brought forth for removing him from power. It's happened before. In 2000, Saddam Hussein announced Iraqi oil would be traded in euros, not dollars. Sanctions and an invasion followed, some say because the Americans were desperate to prevent OPEC from transferring oil trading in all its member countries to the euro. The UK's gold is kept here in a secure vault somewhere in the depths of the Bank of England. As in most developed countries, there's not enough to go around. But that's not the case in places like Libya and many of the Gulf states. A gold dinar would have given oil-rich African and Middle Eastern countries the power to turn around to their energy-hungry customers and say, sorry, the price has gone up and we want gold. Some say the US and its NATO allies literally couldn't afford to let that happen. Laura Emmett, RT, London. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, October 24th, 2011. I'm Darko. This is my website, ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Also, I have a YouTube channel. If you'd like to visit, it's ddarko2012. And I have a poll up here on my website. It's, do you believe entertainers such as Beyonce and Gaga are aware of the subtle pharaonic Illuminati symbology in their performances slash rituals? 82% say yes. You can go in there and vote on that if you'd like. There's seven days left to vote. Also, if you'd like to receive GGN updates um, by email, you can put your email address right there. Uh, besides that, uh, most, if not all, the links will be posted in YouTube's video description. Okay, so we have Miss Clinton uh, back in the news again. Last time we saw her uh, basically cheering with her uh, fist up in the air, uh, saying, you know, she's glad that Gaddafi's dead and stuff like that, laughing as she heard the news. And uh, and then she went on to what? Then she went on to uh, uh, Pakistan and that area, basically saying, you know, again, uh, uh, warmongering. And then we have work of ordinary Libyans led to Gaddafi ouster, says Clinton. And she actually, I'll get to this quote uh, in the middle of this video or in a couple of minutes um, where she's basically um, uh, warmongering again um, against Iran saying, you know, and it's not even anything of any basis. It's just because they, quote, pulled the troops out of Iraq and the Iraq war is going to be ended. Uh, that's a paraphrase by Obama's uh, uh, recently within the past few days. And what is that? And of course, there's going to be mercenaries left over, so we're not actually leaving. And there's the biggest, you know, uh, embassy, U.S. embassy in the world there. So, I mean, obviously, we're not leaving, and there's going to be mercenaries there. It's still going to be killing, and it's not going to be a sovereign country anymore. never will be. And so they're using that as an excuse to go out on the little verbal attack. Oh, we've been attacked. Now we've got to verbally attack Iran and say, see, or you better not think about it. You better not think about it just because we pull out the troops. You know, so, again, she's, uh, she's war posturing all around the world right now. She's done it in the South China Sea as well. It says here, uh, U.S. Secretary of State Clinton on Sunday praised the liberation of Libya as the work of ordinary brave Libyans. Get that, guys. After all this covering of these people being drug addicts and terrorists, Muslim extremists, the same people that she vows to fight, she calls them work of ordinary brave Libyans, shaking off the yoke of more than 40 years of oppression. And we all know the U.S. doesn't oppress its own people, right? As they were pepper spraying them, leaving a football game, right? We all know about that, how great they are and non-oppressive they are. Libyan rebel commander admits his fighters have al-Qaeda links. And of course, what? They killed him. They killed him. Just like all their other little workers and assets. They kill them before they can come out and say, we work with the United States. Then they would be seen as oppressors, which they are. HRW, uh, Human Rights Watch, urged Libya to investigate executions of Gaddafi supporters. So now, I've already covered this about um, that um, it was a black congressman. It doesn't really matter whether he's black. It's just that's my description. Maybe you'll remember it. It was like two months ago, and he was over in Africa. And he, remember I, I was mentioning it uh, in the article. I covered it where he was saying that he went over there, and there was like 90% of the people love Gaddafi, they don't support him, they love him. But uh, but the other thing was what? Was the atrocities being committed by the NTC, these uh, these guys, whatever, terrorists, mercenaries. And 
and what was the whole gist of it? The gist was that NATO was instructing these guys to go and kill them and execute them the way they did so that they can come in there and blame them on blame it on them when real in reality it was nato so nato knew this was going to happen the world governing body the global government as i call it knew that this was going to happen again it creates a what a vacuum for the global government it also creates a vacuum for what for exactly what uh, the powers that be want which is the antithesis right of what they are what they represent which is quote democracy and um Christianity and um, I don't know what Judaism, whatever you else you want to uh, throw in there, but basically anything that's not Islamic. So what do they do? Uh, Libya's liberation interim ru uh, ruler unveils more radical than expected. Oh, it was more radical than expected. Just like they didn't expect the mass graves, they didn't expect that, th that this was going to happen. That they were going to back Al Qaeda terrorists uh, to overthrow a sovereign country and a sovereign leader. And, um, yeah, so now they plan for um, Sharia Islamic law. So, yeah, they didn't expect it. Just like this, they didn't expect that Gaddafi was going to be killed before he went on trial. Hmm, Gaddafi was captured alive, and who killed him? Oh, it's a lone gunman. Yes, I killed Gaddafi. It's a lone gunman, everybody. That's right. So it's here, uh, Libya's most gruesome tourist attraction. Our man comes face-to-face -to -face with Gaddafi's battered and bloodied corpse. Just purely sickening. I mean, I mean, if you were, de if you were dead and deceased, would you want to be encased in this tomb? It's like a metal tomb, cement tomb bunker or something like that and then to be paraded like this i mean these people look like they're like americans going into walmart on uh you know black friday or something like that i mean come on what the fuck it says here libya Gaddafi's will don't clean my body before burial so i'm sure they're gonna uh grant his wishes and he goes in there and says that basically i would like my family especially women and children to be treated well after death the libyan people should protect its identity achievements history and honorable image of its ancestors and heroes and of course that's what 40 years of oppression 40 years of making uh libya one of the most advanced countries in africa and it says here i call on supporters to continue the resistance and fight any foreign aggressors against libya today tomorrow and always this is important. You can go in there and check that out. Let the free people of the world know that we, I guess he's talking about Libya, their, uh, their um, Jemma Rahaya group, political group. It says that we could have bargained over and sold out our cause in return for our personal, secure, and stable life. We received many offers to this effect, but we chose to be at the vanguard of the confrontation as the badge of duty and honor. And so Libya nation is declared liberated. So now they are free and liberated from oppression. Libya UN renews commitment to support nation as new leaders declare uh, liberation. So now the UN is going to go in there and back them. The Sons of Africa claims a continent's, uh, continent's crown jewels. So Barack Obama announced he was sending the U.S. Special Forces Uganda to join the civil war there. He said in the next uh, few months, U.S. troops will be sent to South Sudan, Congo, and Central African Republic. He said they only engage in self-defense, Obama said. And he said uh, basically uh, that they're going to go in there and take all their um, precious metals and diamonds and that. Then we have Envoy Pledge Kenya. Envoy pledges U.S. support for Kenya forces. U.S. on Sunday declared its readiness to provide technical support, i.e. bombs and guns, uh, in supporting Kenya's killing of Somalia. This next article, Kenya, the real cost of war against Al-Shabaab terrorists, and um, it goes in there basically says how the Kenyans are going to have to pay for this war. Money for war is never put into the development budgets, and they're talking about a war tax and all that. Uh, go on here and says two U.S. drones crash in South Somalia. So two unmanned uh, drones operated by U.S. have crashed in southern Somalia near, near the border with Kenya. It says here U.S. assassination drones have targeted an area controlled by Al-Shabaab group and killed at least 36 Somali people. Yeah, it's crazy. French warplanes and warships joined Kenya against Somalia's Al-Shabaab group and bombarded. So said that they killed at least 59 people and dozens more and wounded during French military attack. Rubio, I guess he's a, a congressman here, says that Bashar Assad, you're next, buddy. McCain raises prospect of a military option in Syria, then surprise recall of U.S. ambassador to Syria spurred by uh, threats. And we have Russia bans entry to U.S. officials in retaliation. Said allegedly involved in killings and abductions of uh, basically talking about U.S. officials doing that. Turkey declines Israeli aid offer. And, yeah, this was a horrible story. And I know Turkey sits on a huge fault line in the north side of it. Uh, but it is kind of weird how there's always these certain countries that come in, like in Pakistan when they had that, and they always try to come to their aid. It's usually their enemy.
which makes you wonder if it's like a harp type weapon. Here's the article I was talking about left behind in Iraq, thousands of contractors. This is GGN, I'm Darko. Thank you.